I'm on top of the world. This is the tallest building on the planet, the Burj Khalifa. And this, this is Dubai. I'm surrounded by the biggest, the best, the largest, the most luxurious of everything. But I'm not here to buy a racehorse or ski in the desert or stay at the world's only seven-star luxury hotel. I'm here to ask, what makes Dubai Dubai? And the answer actually has a whole lot to do with lentils. I'm searching the globe for the world's best lentil recipes. I'm a chef with a passion for travel. I'm Michael Smith, Lentil Hunter. I've always been fascinated by the geography of cities. Why did they develop in one place and not another? History shows that the answer usually has a lot to do with trade, with the flow of goods which is why Dubai is here, because of this water, the Dubai Creek, and this land's historic location at a crossroads between the Eastern world and the Western world. Long before oil came and went, this city was a historic trading post, and today it still is. It's become a global finance center, but at heart, it's still a city full of merchants, and traders, and chefs, like my friend Vijay. Here's a travel tip. Wherever I go, I always find a local chef to show me around. They know the lay of the land, the secrets and surprises, where the best of everything can be found and the easiest way to get there. Basically, how the city works. And here, it's all about international trade. Pretty busy marketplace, yeah, eh? Yeah, absolutely. This is the central trading unit of all the lentils and legumes uh, in Dubai. Uh, probably this is the central market for the whole of Middle East. Uh, most of the lentils get exported from here in the markets like, you know, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, you name it. You know, it goes all across. All and over the Persian Gulf? Absolutely. Most of the lentils and legumes get imported from Canada. The actual trading started happening probably in early 1950s, 1960s. But these guys are here for the last thousands of years. You know, there are much faster means of exporting, but still Dubai follows the traditional ways of, you know, the carrying the lentils onto the dows, which takes uh, several, you know, days. Those are the ships that we see on Dubai Creek. Absolutely. They are old traditional boats made up of wood. I'd say for the last hundreds of years, they've been exporting the lentils by that mean and it still follow the tradition which is amazing. I find that fascinating, the tradition of it, that this for thousands of years has been a global trading point. Yeah, yeah, thousands of years. Unbelievable. By the way, BJ's got a pretty sweet gig. He's a chef at the Armani Hotel's signature restaurant, the best in town. Oh yeah. It's in the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. And of course, lentils are all over his menu. This is your soup. This is white lentil fritters with coconut shavings and a soup which is a mix of three lentils and some tomatoes, a hint of mustard seeds and coconut. So awesome. this is a beautiful melange of lentils all around. So enjoy your soup. You know, in this town, you hear words like magnificent, awesome, lavish, and they all apply. But the one word that matters the most to me here is delicious, and that's exactly what this is. And best of all, Chef EJ is going to show me how he made this. How's it going? BJ's signature soup was delicious, and as he cooked, you can see why. He's a master of spices and knows how to patiently build flavors every step of the way. Now, this, this is very interesting to me. I've never seen this before. It's a spice stock. Absolutely. It's a yeah, spice yeah, yeah. stock. Since the lentils need water to simmer and tenderize, 
the spice tart adds an extra dimension of flavor. And this is a chili powder. This lentil soup is, is almost done. A truly delicious soup, just layered with flavor, but the garnish is what really blew me away. So now I'm gonna tell you how to make white lentil fritters. A bit of salt, I love black pepper, a burst of ginger flavor, and some coriander. Okay, you stir it nicely, and uh, the oil should be hot and nice. How do you check oil if you don't have a thermometer? It's called ripple effect. So you just, and you see, it's a perfect ripple, means the oil is very, very hot. And if you do that 10,000 times in your career, you know exactly what to look for. Yes, like. but don't stick your finger in, no. because that You learn that day one. If you want, you can use your the spoon, but I would go the traditional way. Oh, okay. I gotta try that. This is the sort of thing that you do 100 or 200 of these. The you figure it out pretty yeah. quick. I've made a lot of fritters in my career, but never a batter this simple. No baking soda, no baking powder, basically just a puree of lentils. It, it's really simple. Wonderful, beautiful color, even color. Here you go, Michael. These are the wonderful white lentil fritters, which we just did. And I can already spot a few Canadian shapes here, which you did a wonderful job with this. Thank you. And, and, and from the world's tallest chef to the chef of the world's tallest building. Thank you very much, it was my pleasure. It's been my pleasure, thank you, chef. I'm taking my Canadian fritter and I'm heading for home. Hmm. Dubai is an extraordinary, ever-evolving city. Everywhere you look, there's a dream come true, even on your plate. So I'm not surprised a chef shared the best kept secret in town, how to make the tastiest fritter I've ever eaten, a lentil fritter. That's my recipe. And I'm heading on. I'm Michael Smith, Lentil Hunter.